Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, you want to slack off. Stop making me work as a receptionist. Cross post or slash petty revenge. My timesheets aren't accurate enough. All right then. I've been thrown out of my office by a temp worker. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe so that you will never miss a video. Let's get started. You want to slack off? Stop making me work as a receptionist. Cross post or slash petty revenge. Disclaimer, I don't remember all the details of this exactly. Further disclaimer, as I'm not sure whether this belongs here or in our slash petty revenge. I'll be posting it in both places. I typed this up shortly after it happened last month, but am only now posting it. I work for a small company on a one-woman IT support team for around 30 people. 20 with computers. Our main office, where I work, is in the magical city of country music, Bible thumpers, and tourists in cowboy hats. We've seen quite a few colorful individuals pass through this company, many leaving in frustration at the management, and one even leaving in handcuffs. But this story is about a girl from Texas. Miss Texas was hired on about two to three years ago as HR, and was about as entitled as they come. Very pretty, but she seemed to think everyone was her slave except for two people. CEO and ops manager. There had been several incidents with her, such as making an engineer go to the store for her to fetch Christmas decorations, making one of the welders install those stupid headlight eyelashes on her car, etc. Nobody wanted to talk to the ops man about it because we're pretty sure he was having an affair with her, or the CEO because he hired and vouched for her and he would just kick the can back down to ops man. She was, for all intents and purposes, unfireable. This particular story begins when Miss Texas and the CEO got it into their heads that incoming calls must be greeted by a human being, not an IVR during all business hours. Customers don't want to sit through an automated touchtone system. They'll hang up and call our competitors. So I changed the routing, and the task of answering every single call fell to the office administrator. Admin stormed out two weeks later with a middle finger for Miss Texas, never to return. Odd, I thought. We're a systems integrator, not some sort of retail or service business. Our customers are big corporations, not let me speak to your manager Karens. It couldn't have been that bad, could it? Now we no longer had anyone to answer the phones. Miss Texas was too lazy to hire a new receptionist, which of course meant someone already working here had to do it. I bet you can't guess who. Of course you can. I argued the point that I didn't really have time to answer the phones. I was both IT support and .NET development. Miss Texas argued along the lines of but you hardly do any work anyway. You just sit there and play games and wait for someone to have an IT problem. We argued over email back and forth for the whole day, culminating in her screaming in all caps, you will answer the phones. You will make it your number one priority. You will be terminated if you fail to answer a single call, effective tomorrow. And so, tomorrow, I found out just how bad it was. 2016 was when robocalls first started to creep into the wires. And wouldn't you know, we got them. A lot of them. We also got legitimate telemarketers, which were even more annoying as they took more time to deal with. All in all, about 5% of the calls I fielded were from actual customers. And they all just asked for the engineering department anyway. Now, here's where my role as IT comes in. IT wait lines were getting long. Salesman A needs this computer looked at. Engineer B's domain password needs to be reset. I stoically explained to everyone that the lead times for their issues would be a little longer than usual, as Miss Texas was forcing me to answer calls. I complied with her order to the letter and let the IT issues just pile up, not to mention zero progress on my software dev project. When someone brought a computer to me to look at, visibly annoyed that I couldn't just come to their desk like I used to, I'd of course be happy to take a look at their computer, but when the phone rang, I would stop what I was doing to answer. I was swamped, and I hated it. By Friday, I'd had enough, so I put a maliciously compliant plan into action. On Monday, Miss Texas marches into the server room and puts her personal cell phone on my desk. My Wi-Fi won't work anymore, will ya fix it? Me, well, Miss Texas, I don't know much about iPhones, and technically I shouldn't be working on employees' personal devices. Her face darkens, and as soon as she opens her mouth to tear me a new one, I interrupt her. Me, of course, our company policy allows me make an exception for you. She smiles. Me, but I'd have to write up a very detailed ticket for it. For documentation. Miss Texas, is there any way we could, um, skip the documentation? It's just a Wi-Fi reset. 
me, I can, but you'll have to wait until I've finished my work with everyone else's issues. MT, and when will that be? Me, oh, I don't know, there are a lot of people in line in front of you. Plus monthly network maintenance slash backup recovery audit is this week, and I have to stop everything I'm doing to answer the phone 20 times a day, but I can probably get to it today. I never got to it today, or the next day. Over the week, she kept pestering me about it, complaining about having to use her own mobile data, begging and demanding me to fix it because she had overage charges on her data plan, etc. Every single time, I would bring up how swamped I was with phone calls and other things, even interrupting her once mid-conversation to answer a call, which left her fuming. Every day I would find a new excuse. She ended up threatening to fire me a few times, copying ops man and CEO in emails about my insubordination and how slow IT service was, but every time I would reply all and directly quote the all caps email she'd sent demanding me to make phone reception my first priority. Finally, on Friday, I told her that maybe, just maybe, if I didn't have to answer the phones, I could find time to work on her iPhone and overlook the fact that she was using company bandwidth instead of her own data plan. I said that last part with a very pointed look, and her expression when she realized I'd known all along why she needed the Wi-Fi was priceless. Within the hour, I had an email asking me to change the call routing to one of the sales staff. Sorry, Tim. Here's what was actually going on. What Miss Texas was doing instead of working on hiring new people, writing employee reviews, or managing office supplies, incoming slash outgoing mail, etc., was watching Netflix. Although we had no content filters because CEO is a penny pincher, we do have DNS logs on our firewall. Every day at about 9.30 am, there would be regular requests to Netflix content server's domain names, until 11.45, when she'd go get fast food, and it would start up again at 12. After I changed the Wi-Fi password, there was nothing. HR has a camera in the office to make sure nobody commits fraud slash steals any files, but her body blocked line of sight to her phone. In the end, Miss Texas was never actually caught or fired. I couldn't blow the whistle, because dynamic IPs are tricky to prove. Or so I thought, if I'd known a little more about Windows Server's DHCP role at the time, this would have been our slash pro revenge. She instead ended up leaving five months later to pursue better opportunities, which basically meant she had a very nasty breakup with Ops Man. But at the very least, I forced her to go without her House of Cards binge at work for a week escaped from the telemarketer reception hellhole, and held an empty thread of ITCs all over her head until she quit. I was reminded of this because last week I finally got approval to switch our call routing back to an IVR, instead of a live answer every time. Our current office admin has never been happier. Note, for those unaware, an IVR is the automated answering service that says for X department, press 1. For Y department, press 2 etc. My timesheets aren't accurate enough. All right then. Timesheets have become a battle at work in our relatively small but growing company. To wit, our timesheets serve to masters. On the one hand, they provide important information on where all of our efforts are going and who is being overworked. On the other, they form the basis of our billing to our clients. I'm a technical PM who occasionally jumps in to do admin work on a Salesforce database when our solution architects and BAs are too busy. I'm rusty, and I don't feel clients should have to pay for me having to re-remember how to do something or search something, do a write-up, and run it by an essay before implementing in our sandboxes. I suggest something similar to our admin trainees. Because they're learning, I tell them to bill half the time they worked on deliverables to our client, and half to a training budget while they get their bearings so the client isn't being billed for learning time. New management feels that as a result, our timesheets are inaccurate. Consequently, they now review my timesheets on a weekly basis despite the fact that I only do it to save clients money. Fair enough, I suppose. Except that a few clients have essentially signed separate work orders for major overhauls to the system with a budget associated with each. Easy if you're doing the actual work, as RBAs and SAs do. Problem is, our time tracking system has zero tasks associated with overhead, and a lot of what I do is scrape the system to create documentation internal and external, keep track of overall schedule, and keep as much unnecessary paperwork away from our SA and BA as possible. In other words, overhead. I have asked for tasks associated with overhead to be included and in slash, or better guidance on what to do if I don't feel a client should be billed for work for one reason or another. A number of people have shared my concern. We have gotten nothing of the sort, and I continue to have timesheet reviews. 
The most guidance I got was write detailed notes and we can figure it out afterwards. Well, okay then. Timesheets now get updated every hour. Clients with tons of tasks and subtasks and no overhead get a completely unique, ad hoc solutions to how the time is notated. The notes section of each item provides a detailed explanation of why I entered the amount of time that I did for the particular task, including whether or not it was an arbitrary division. The notes are quite detailed. If it ever takes me at least 10 minutes to type up my explanations, I throw in a 15-minute log time for explaining how my time was supposed to work and why I build my work where I did which gets charged to HR tasks. I also give them a 15-minute charge every day for making and remaking coffee and a generic 15-minute charge for bathroom breaks, both clearly labeled as such. Having recently been told that level of detail was gratuitous and unnecessary, I simply informed them that the guidance I was given was to write detailed notes. And until I have a way of denoting overhead in a consistent fashion that does not arbitrarily hit fixed funds for deliverables the clients expect, I will do what I was told was best practice. Our reviews have gotten quite boring as I assure my supervisors that everything I have to say is on the timesheet, and I have nothing further to add. Edit, quick clarification, because a lot of people are especially concerned about unnamed companies' revenue stream, billing some of my time to training or something to that effect. While debatable in my view, is not the major issue. The point is, there is no overhead task associated with client work, and that's a lot of what I do. I was audited for inconsistencies regarding the training code, explained the issue, but pointed out that without an overhead task associated with clients, I'm either arbitrarily charging random tasks for specific agreements, or I'm burying that potential revenue in internal overhead anyways. That issue has not been fixed and I continue to be audited. Hence the MC I'm not going to keep finding loosely associated tasks to stuff my time into and then sit there at a meeting justifying why I arbitrarily cut up my time the way I did. It's in my absurdly detailed notes, which I wouldn't need if I just had an overhead task for a client. You wanna take those hours and bill them. Be my guest. Don't. Eat the cost to remain competitive. I have no dog in that fight, but either give me the tools to accurately represent my time, or don't complain about my fiction. I've been thrown out of my office by a temp worker. We're to art directors managing a big client, so when one is sick or away, there's always one in the office. We have an office which is separated from the rest of the team, as we're doing lots of documents that are under NDA I usually never meet my clients and when I do, it's in our building, so I dress casually, instead of other co-workers. I'm also looking way younger than I am. My co-worker is quite the total opposite, nicely dressed with a big beard. But while I'm a few years younger than him, we still have the same exact job. I've been working from home on a big project for the last days. The other AD is leaving the country, so I needed to be back at the office in order to supervise the work of some of the designers. When I come to the office, the first thing I do is to head to the coffee machine to have some coffee and discuss with some of my colleagues. They tell me that the CEO and COO are both out of the office for the rest of the week. So basically I'm the one in charge of my team. After that, I go to my desk as usual and there to persons I've never met, which are one freelance we hired because of the workflow and another dude which is replacing my other designer as he's sick. Before I could say hi or anything, this dude gets quickly up. Dude, what are you doing here? We're doing confidential work. You're not supposed to see that. Me, hi, I'm D getting in my way. You should leave now, M, but I'm D get out. I stop there and get out, trying to hide my smile. As I walk out of our office, I stumble upon my designer which comes back from her lunch break. I quickly tell her what happened and after she laughed at me, I ask her to not tell anything to this dude. I'm having a second coffee, thinking about what I would do now. Update 1. I told my client what happened. There's a meeting with my whole team and some other people happening in a few hours, and I'm part of it, as we're going to discuss various projects. Coffee shop owner is a nice dude. I had a free coffee when I told him what happened. Update 2. I was able to go in the meeting room earlier, as I planned. My client is still laughing at me about what happened. Some of my colleagues came and one of them told me she knew what happened, because my designer told her. She was impatient to see how it will go. Finally, my design team is there. My designer has the biggest smile ever and she presents the client to the two new persons. The guy makes a weird face when he spot me and I see him becoming white a f when my designer introduced me to the other freelancer, and him. The other one, which was there this morning when he threw me out of my office looks shocked. The dude is slightly trying to hide behind my designer. 
She's way shorter than him. It's difficult to stay serious, so I quickly start the meeting once I can make a sentence without bursting in laughter. The meeting goes as it should and the dude is not talking much. I can't make eye contact with him, I've never seen someone as embarrassed as him. He's looking really unsure and stressed when he has to talk about the projects he was working on. I try my best to have him interact, but he seems too ashamed to talk with me. He's saved by my designer answering sometimes instead of him. I wish she was a bit less nice person, but I won't force him too much. He's slowly merging with his chair, and looks quite red now. At the end of the meeting, I had to send them back to work and stay a bit more with my client to discuss. He was the first one to get out. Unfortunately, I could not see him after the meeting, but he'll be back tomorrow morning. I have big expectations when we'll meet again. I'll make sure to wear the same hoodie as today. Update 3. This will be my log until he arrives. ET a one hour, I'm the only one of the team in the office. I'm impatient to see how it goes. ETA 30 minutes, I notice someone left a really nice pen on my desk. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it's a gift from the one who stole all the other pens I had. ETA 25 minutes, I go to make myself a second coffee. The cleaning lady recognizes me. Maybe one day, I'll know her name and she'll know mine. ETA 20 minutes, the cleaning lady came to say goodbye. I'm alone in the office. I'm getting impatient. ETA 15 minutes, I made a third coffee. I think it has replaced my blood now. I feel a bit anxious, like just before a first date or meeting a new potential client. ETA 10 minutes, one of my colleague finally arrives. He heard of the story. He's impatient as well. He's sitting in my office, waiting for him to come. ETA 5 minutes, I'm stressed, but yesterday was fun. I wonder how today will go. ETA 0, my designer is here. She's quite happy that the dude didn't arrive before her. ETA plus 5, I'm starting to be a bit anxious. Will he come? ETA 10, he's finally here. He apologized to me and said he's been feeling embarrassed and quite ashamed by how he behaved yesterday. Apparently, I was not looking like the idea he had of me. Based on what people said about me, he also said he was quite a bit stressed, as my colleague wasn't here and he was working on a confidential document. For his defense, it was quite an important one. I can live with someone to dedicated to confidentiality. He brought me some croissants as a apology gift. I think I like him. I still chuggle. He seems quite a nice guy after all. He apologized in person and in public. I respect that. Maybe people can buy my trust with food. I think this is the end of this story. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.